Time for a parking lot sale. If you are here solely for the 170 review, well, skip to this timestamp. And if you wanna see how I scored an awesome deal on it, well, keep watching. I love Harbor Freight's parking lot sales and that's because it's not for what they advertise. They put in open box or returned items during these sales. It's the only time of year that they do it. Yes, they do have their clearance sections, but that's a different item. The big stuff comes out during the parking lot sales and they always have a couple welders in there. Now don't skip on looking at the ad and that's because the items that are in there are usually the best priced items throughout the year. For example, this time around, they have the Titanium 125. If you don't have one, it's a great welder. Pick it up. And for the best deals, go check out the open boxed items. That is how I picked up this beautiful Titanium 170 for 200 and I think it was like $250 off the list price. So what's the drawback? Well, yes, there is one very large drawback with this and that is, all open box items are sold as is, no warranty. It's not like Harbor Freight gives you that great of a warranty anyway, but just keep that in mind, there's no warranty. They do give you a 14 day uh, return period, so I guess it's kind of like a 14 day warranty. And you bet, when I came home, I made sure that it came with everything and tested it out. The MIG gun, ground clamp, we got gas hose regulator, 10 pound spool adapter, MIG nozzle, flux core nozzle, roller, extra tips, wire, 110 to 220 adapter. And yes, it did come with some MIG wire, which I've already installed. This definitely is not an unboxing video and that's just because it was already an open box deal. And I wanted to get it home and quickly take it all out so I could test it out. Um, some things I noticed right off the bat, the MIG gun, just a standard old regular cheap MIG gun. Um, same, with the, same with the ground clamp, it does have a good bite. One thing I like about these though, is they do have, they are about 10 feet in length. Also the power cord is a nice 10 foot length. And if you by chance are running with the adapter, that gives you an extra two and a half feet. So that one is actually a 12 and a half foot cord. Really nice to be able to reach across the garage or the shop with this. Um, with the longer leads. The 120 to 240 volt toggle switch is on the back, gas inlets on the back, which is nice because your bottle's typically on the back as well. Um, and you got the on off switch. Now, I do think it's just a tad bit more convenient to have that on the front, but not that big of a deal. Moving around to the front, you actually do have nice DINs connections for easy switching. I wasn't looking. For easy switching between the flux and the MIG, uh, you do have infinite controls for both the wire speed and voltage. Now there are a couple features on here that I actually don't really use. Inductance is one of them. I typically just keep it in the middle and call it good. The other is the two touch and four touch. I don't do a whole lot of long beads and so I'm fine just with it on two touch and just holding down the trigger for my welds. Looking up underneath the hood, there is a very nice chart for both flux core and MIG settings. And whether you knew this or not, this is actually a metal thickness gauge. So not a lot of people have calipers or gauges, so you pretty much just, just you pretty much just stick the metal up to it and you can see what you've got. So, got some quarter inch right there. It is spool gun ready, and of course it is sold separately. Yeah. That would be the day when someone actually throws in a spool gun with the welder. A nice big bay for a 10 pound spool. And if you take a look, we've got a nice cast and metal wire feed system. That thing should last quite a while. Now this is an inverter machine. And the biggest benefit to that is the size. This thing is only about 25 pounds. If you are new to welding and you haven't ever set up the wire, check out my MIG welder setup video for a full setup with some more tips and tricks. And I will link it above. I started out testing it with flux cord. And well, even following the chart, I was having a hard time welding the thinner material, which, you know, is typical with flux cord. But once I kicked it up to some thicker material, it did awesome. The welds came out just great and very happy with that end. A side note, if you are using the 110 power, you definitely will need the 20 amp breaker. And that's just because if you're only using a 15 amp breaker, this will happen. And after that, I did kick it over to the 220 just to test it out. It ran great on 220. And finally, I did switch it over to MIG welding. The MIG welds turned out fabulous and well, I haven't switched back over to the flux core. 
So just to recap, some of the things I really like about this machine are, well, the long leads, um, the dual voltage that you can switch between 110 and 220, and the portability. This thing is super light. Now there is really only one major drawback to this machine, and that would be, well, it's not even with this machine, it's with Harbor Freight in general, the 90 day warranty. Uh, man, I don't know. It really does say something when they back their products with something more than 90 days. Uh, just remember, and if you do find an open box deal, there is no warranty. Now, I look, I still picked it up even with no warranty, and that's how much I trust Titanium brand. They think they've been around and proven themselves for the past five or six years, that they are a good enough welder that will be a great welder for anyone in your garage, in your home, you know, type setting. If I were in my shop and were welding every day with it, I actually probably would not get the titanium. I would get something just a little more reliable or something with a little better warranty. And that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.